Enjoy our outdoor gym facility with nature as your backdrop. The campsite exhibits nature's beauty and is the perfect getaway for visitors seeking peace and serenity. Enjoy our coffee.
Let's give him a hand of praise. 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 You can do better than that. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Lord, I lift your name on high. I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you in my life. So glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. I love to sing your praise. I love to sing your praise. I'm so glad you came. I'm so glad you in my life. So very glad you came to save us. So glad you came to save us. Lord, you came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth, from the earth to the cross. I hung you up on the tree. From the cross, from the cross to the you rose with all power. To the side. Oh Lord, Lord I sing along with us. Say you came. You came from heaven to show us all the way. To show the way from the earth, from the earth to the cross. Sinful to the cross, 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 to the I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I am so glad. I'm so glad you my life. So very glad you came to save us. So glad you came to save us. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. So glad you're in my life. So glad you came to save us. So glad you came to save us. Fill the room with us. You came from heaven. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth, from the earth to the cross. My sinful to my death to the cross to the cross to the cross to the grave from the grave to the Together we stand, we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. We're gonna bow down and say, We bow down and worship, worship him now. Singing our praise, our hearts are missing. Say, Together we stand, we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Worship now, holy is the Lord. Holy is the Lord. God Almighty. We all are this way. 
Father, we just want to thank you this morning. All the glory and the honor we give unto you, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity, Gosiame, that you have presented before us by laying such a table and inviting us to this banquet. All kinds of spiritual foods, Lord, you have dished out to us, to us and we ate to our heart's content. Lord, we are filled to overflowing. And Lord, we thank you for Lord showing us where we have gone wrong. And Lord, enabling us, Lord, to find our way back to you. Our way back to your heart. Thank you for the rebuke, for the correction, for the exhortation that you have gossip presented before us and Lord you have given us hearts mighty God that have been receptive to your word and I pray give us minds that are submissive to your word and to cause the leading of your spirit and hearts that are Lord well and able to receive everything that you have said so manda to us and allow us never to forget these words the illustrations that were presented before us, the examples that were made in this place to educate us, to elevate us, Lord, to free us from all forms of bondages. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that let the joy of the Lord be our strength and Gosiami always go. See, I say again, Lord, remind us of these words that were shared here today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Just look at the na your neighbor say to you, say, praise the Lord. 
And the other neighbor say, praise the Lord. And then the one behind you say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we give the Lord a big hand of praise? We can do better. We can do better. Can we give the Lord a big hand clap? Amen. We may be seated, saints. Thank you very much for just a little while. Standing before you is uh, Wame and Nomawe Tungagani. We'll be convening uh, today. Uh, we are from the Western Cape. And uh, I'd just like to take this time and greet uh, our mother and the apostle, uh, our principals of Burning Bush Ministries, the founders and presidents of this ministry in the name of Jesus Christ and greetings to Umamu Zamisa from Family Worship Center. Uh, greetings to all our guests um, in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I know your daughter Mama is in, th in this place uh, together with Utadwa uh, Kwake. But Pastor Mkokeli, yes, and his sister, sorry for that. Greetings to you uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. And um, greetings to our general overseer. Uh, greetings to our bishops uh, and our pastors and all the saints, all you leaders and all the saints in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 No more way to what a time uh, this conference that we had. I gave birth yesterday. You didn't know I was pregnant. I never knew you could be pregnant. I gave birth yesterday. But yesterday I realized that in God anything is possible. And that there is no man or woman. There is no gender. We are all sons. But yet we, we can all give birth. Amen. I took care of my baby this morning. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Did you give birth yesterday? Amen. Somebody who gave birth yesterday say hallelujah. Amen. Yeah, let me also greet um, Mama. Greetings to you, Nodata, as our parents in the Lord, founders of Burning Bush Ministries, grace and peace uh, to the apostles that are in this place, um, Apostle uh, and Mama Zamisa, as we have said from Family Worship Center, we bless God to have you here. We know also Apostle Mama Spanion is also with us and the family. We also bless God for them. Uh, we also bless God for Prophet. Uh, also, Ben, who is also with us, uh, has been with us this weekend. Greetings to all of you, and also greetings to uh, the, the children of the spiritual father of our father and mother uh, in the Lord. Uh, greetings to you. Uh, we bless God to have you in this place. We also greet um, every everyone, the bishops, the pastors, the elders, the saints, everyone is greeted in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. I wish it was not the last day. I wish it was the first day. But all good things have to come to an end. But while we still have joy in our hearts, I think let's go to giving. You know, this morning I, I just have uh, this scripture, John 3:16, that uh, we all know that it says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, so, and, and in him giving his only begotten son, <coughs> he gave so that we may have everlasting life. life. <coughs> and that is the greatest gift anybody can receive. And that is the greatest gift that God can give. But, you know, sometimes we forget that our God is a giver when he asks of us to give. And yet we have come to a giver who has shown us how it is to give. And what kind of a heart we must have what, when we must give. And that it is something that must cost you something. And uh, it must be something that you treasure. And it must be something that you do joyfully uh, as you do your giving. Yesterday, uh, Bishop uh, Tase also spoke here yesterday about how a gift makes a, a way uh, for the giver. As she told us about Cornelius, who we know that in the book of um, 
Proverbs 18, verse 16, the scripture does say that a gift does make a way for the giver. But also it continues to say that it also puts that giver in front of great men. And we saw with Cornelius that uh, not only was he brought in front of great men, but also the creator himself uh, came before Cornelius and remembered Cornelius. So you can imagine what your giving can do. You can imagine what your gift can do to God. So if you want God to make a way for you, it means that now you must have a way of touching God's heart. And, and the way to do that, it is a gift unto the Lord. So may we bow our heads as we're about to give and uh, we, we prepare our offerings. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, this morning. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, that you, you have given to us. Oh, God, you gave, you gave your one son, oh, God, and that gift of your son, Jesus Christ, has made way for you, oh, God, that Jesus becomes the first fruit of many sons, oh, God, Tiklon Amanda, that have followed Goseling. May you have many sons today and many more to gather. Tiklon Amanda, Lord, goes during these end times, and, Lord, it's only because of the one gift. May we learn from you, oh, God. May we understand your principles, Tiklon Amanda Onge, and be able, Lord, goes to touch your heart in a way, Tiklon Amanda, that you will continue to bless us, Lord, in our, in our, in our lives, in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. May I ask ushers just to circulate e offering baskets as the worshippers uh, give us the song. <laughs>
the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise 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 him the Lord. Praise ye. Praise ye the Lord. Come on, let us praise him. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Because the Lord. The Lord is good. Come on, let us reach out, Bazalan, and come. We bless you, Jesus. We give glory unto you, Lord. We worship you, O King of Zion. We worship you, Lion of Judah. You are my heart's desire. Hallelujah. Greetings to um, again to the apostle. Uh, we honor you, Dada, uh, again uh, in our midst. Uh, just a short uh, thing we've come to do is just to call you up uh, to the podium and we give over to you. Thank you. Can we carry on? I will serve no foreign God. No any
and just bless him and thank him. Father, we acknowledge your goodness this morning. You are a good and perfect God. For the Bible says, every good and perfect gift, it comes from you. In whom there's no shadow of turning bad from what you have promised us. We want to thank you for this gathering. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness up to this moment. My God, you have been my God, good to each and every one of us. We love and adore. We worship. We place you in the highest place this morning, my God. Our hearts, my God, I say thank you and thank you and thank you, my God, for your weight. My God, that my God, you have shaped everything that is happening here according to your own purpose. We believe that, Lord. We can see it, Lord. My God, I, my prayer is that we continue in this blessing and apply it in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, we acknowledge your goodness. Amen. Give the Lord a big, big hand of praise. Kind of place. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for this gathering and that we feel it's not one of the wasted gatherings. The Lord has been faithful throughout this conference. And uh, you may be seated. My wife is just going to uh, do some, because we feel that time is against us. Things that we're supposed to do at the end of the service, we might not do them, but uh, uh, like uh, just uh, uh, thanking almost everyone who has been here over to Israel. Thank you so thank you so much. Why is it so little? I'm just a talk. This has been like a talk. Oh, okay. Um, Tim. Thank you so much, Dada, for allowing me to be part of this uh, ministry, growing ministry. Let me honor Apostle Zamisa. All the way from Pumalanga. Osuka in Pumalanga. Grace and peace to all the bishops, bishops pastors, abefundis, leaders, inkokeni, and all the saints in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. A special greetings to Pastor Mkokeli from Full Gospel Church in Amtata. In, in, um, there are the children of our spiritual father, Pastor Mkokeli. You all know him, that you are coming. It's our home. Pastor Mkokeli is the son, the youngest son, who is a pastor. And their daughter, Ms. Babalwa, who grew, grew in, our, in our home. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
We were never chased away from the full gospel. <laughs> we went, uh, we left the... Uh, we're doing uh, things differently today. Just to thank those that uh, made this conference to be what it is today. In our missionaries, we have and the children. From Joy Family Church in Johannesburg. It's because when, I, when I'm here, I want to release them because there's a mistake that they had to book an earlier... earlier Flight, so Ifu, they'll be leaving very soon. They'll be coming right now. They're still busy with the prophet. But before I proceed to thank you, I've got a special uh, thank to Lindy and, uh, and Apostle Zamisa. Just to tell you a short story before I proceed. How we met each other. We met at Pastor Apostle Mapalala's ordination. And we clicked. We never separated. To cut the story short, after Pastor Apostle um, Sibanyoni went to the Lord, Apostle Zamisa was attacked, he nearly died. With the same COVID and the double pneumonia. Double pneumonia. Just after that, he was even sick more than my husband. When his wife phoned me, when he was saying, Tandy, now I've lost hope. I know how to lose hope. I was also at that stage. But because of the prayers of the saints, I never lost it. Mrs. Zamisa said to me, Mama, I, 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 I'm weak. I said, Mama, when you are weak, it's when you are strong. It means that is the strength that you are gaining. Little did I know that my husband was going to follow him. We cried to the Lord together. Together with all the saints that they were praying for them. I was crying as if I'm seeing him dying, Pastor Zamisa. After we've, uh, we've prevailed with Mrs. Zamisa, she phoned me. One phone she said, Mama Tandy, what, Mama she, has, Tandy? he has just texted me one for the message. because I can see that he's getting better. What, I said, Mrs. Zamisa, come to Eastern Cape. That, we've got God. a reason to celebrate because, because we, we have a reason to celebrate. Our husband could not die. I don't want to talk about my husband. I just wanted to tell you this little, little short thing. Because after that, my husband went sick. But I said, Mrs. Vamisa, let's come and celebrate. We are me now. You know what? Just mum told him. Yes, Joel has a Satan. The devil is the devil is the that was what she said. And then she said she's not going to fail us. They were supposed to go to Deben, but they chose to come here. Thank you so much, Apostle. And God wanted to use you in this ministry. Because Apostle Sibanyoni always said that he's going to come with you. You know what happened last week? After we booked all the flights, he lost his brother. On Sunday, he died. He died. So he was not supposed to be here. It was the Thursday that he was going to come here. There was a funeral. All, 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 all tickets were booked. And then I did I said, I said to her, can we change the booking? Mrs. Zamisa said, no, we are still coming. We're going to the funeral in the morning. In the afternoon, we're coming to Eastern Cape. That's what happened to that woman. Because we would understand that he has just lost his brother. So he cannot come to, 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 to the conference. But here you are. He is here. She is here. Both, of, both are here. Thank you so much, uh, Apostle and Mama. Without wasting time, let me talk about my friend, Apostle Sibanyoni. They are about to leave. 
They are not just leaving because they, 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 they don't want to be part of us. But I didn't check with my friends and what time was their flight. Had I knew, he would, he would have taken the last flight today. But all things work together for good to those who love the Lord. Mamzandi, thank you so much. And your family to be part of this brave of this conference. You know, we come a long way. We come a long way. And we're still going to go a long way. All things work together for good. Yes, I know how you God, are we still a family? God did not want to leave you alone. He left you with a family. And your family, they will be leaving now because the flight is about to take off. They're taking a flight off about 12. So, 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 that's why I'm here. I think even that this was all really long, Mom does, long on my behalf. Zandi, I was just standing to say thank you. Thank you. So don't, be, I don't feel sorry when you have to leave. Bapa Bantuan. Uba Tlalele Gban Babulele. Babi. Oh. So, come on, Jin Bulel. Now, Baba Bantuan. They are the children. Come on, get Koyum Fan. Umfana, umfana, besizo kula city abanye bayangale. Kona sa yo kule choy. So yo kule choy, simuese. So ba wese choy. Thank you so much, say, family. May you travel safe. We'll be coming to Dobsonville. Dobsonville very soon. Kona yambonte ata say pili, 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 pili. Yeah, grace and peace, prophet. Grace and peace, prophet. So ndi, ndi melenche, lo du mulela. I came to thank our friends. Mam Dasa will take over after the church. To thank everybody. I bless you. Without, wait, please, Nadi, just attend to the mic. Yeah. Without wasting any time. Mam you are late. So, it's a 12 o'clock flight. I was all thank you. No, it's half past twelve. So, I was a wamba. I got my mail and she escaped. I got to bullies and my mail. Half past twelve. No, I'm about half past twelve. No, don't you ask that question. Us guys, it's five minutes here. Thank you. Relax. Yeah. Um, without wasting any time. Sing at the time I need to Uh, we. No. We're taking over from the Naganis now because uh, uh, we're going to allow uh, SK, uh, Apostles of Us, to come and share the word of God with us. No words can explain what the Lord has done in this conference. The only thing that I mean was closer to, I mean to the explaining what is happening. When I was talking with uh, SK, as is affectionately known, and, and being called by Abasha was that the Lord took control of whoever is going to stand behind this pulpit. And he made it a point that whoever stands is going to take his own direction. And we truly appreciate what God is doing. There's so much that we spoke about concerning what is, I mean, what has been happening here. Let me, because I'll forget about this so that the pastors, they must take this to heart. SK came up with a suggestion that we always have conferences 
and we after the conference every one of us is talk about the conference was a great conference and nothing after that conference happened no follow ups no application this is not one of the conference this is exactly what is said this should be is it transcribed or whatever into a booklet? All the pastors need to make a follow-up and we preach this message again. And it goes down to our cell churches. It is applied there. because it's not just a message it is a kingdom message that gives a direction not to burn a bush. Forget about burning bush. But whoever is part of this gathering. Uh, SK, there's no need to intro for an intro again. You said Mtwateli is brave. Yes, I am. The scripture that says you can do all things so Christ to strengthen you. I never even worried to Google you. To Google. The only thing I did, I Googled you from above. Then we had the confirmation that all is well. The church stands up. Church stands. I left, Mamlid, just last week, from your heart, Mamlid. Anything that is in your heart now, I will, no, don't say hi. It will come with SK and just talk your heart. May the Lord bless you as they come. It comes.
ሆን ሆን ሲያጸፋን ሲ ኡቲ ሲያልሱ ኢድ ምንጉትሌ <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, a special greeting again to the prophet. Mbuliso ketegile yoga na njalo ku prophet. We am so honored to have been in this conference. Dine nyo baga kulu kuti bendi kono ku konfa. And had all the messages. Ndive yonke le miyalezo. Amen. A special greeting to all the bishops. Mbuliso kubo bongo bishop. The pastors. Abe fundisi. The leadership yonke. Kubo holi bonke beba anja. I audience yonke khona la namhlanje Nabo bonke abantu abakhona here today Ngegama lika Christ Jesus In the name of Jesus Christ The only thing that I would like to say this morning Ekuphela kwento mpostile engathandwa ithetha ngalentseni Is that I thank God Ukuthi ndiyambulela uthixo That we were able to come Ukuthi siye sakwazi ukuza Ah uh, I was tattered bengidabudabukile i was shattered yeah no bengidabudabukile coming to this place this is age apha but going back home kodwa xa sembuyele ekhaya i'm healed ndihamba niphilile number 2 more than just being healed okwesibini ke ngaphezu kobana nibe niphilisiwe ukhona into esibiza ngama divine connections there is something we call relationships divine friendships and connections as i was sitting down there observing young days agalayo there's something in me that knew kukhona into kumngaphakathi eyeyazi nje that there is a divine journey ukuthi kukhona uhambo lokathixo there's a destiny kukhona isiphelo There's a journey we just about to embark on. Kukhona uhambo esizaluqalisa. As a family and as a church. Njengosapho nanje ngebandla. We don't know exactly. Asikazi kahle. Baba umcotheli. Apostle umcotheli. The details and the final details of this journey. Inkukatha zonke ngoluhambo. But step number 1. Kodwa ngana balokuqala. We just know. Kukuthi siyazi. That there is a journey. Ukuthi lukhona uhambo. Esezo ihamba nani as a family. That we are going to walk together along with you. And as a burning bush as a church. Silusapho and nebandla la sebhening bush. We don't know exactly. Asazi kakuhle ukuthi kanjani oluhambo. What shape is it going to take? Luzobelumile kanjani. But this one thing. Kodwa kukhona there is that journey and we we surrender to god's will to that journey thank you so much mama mcoteli thank you so much for being there during that dark valley it was a valley of the shadow of darkness But thank God for the connection. We were not alone as we were getting in and out of that valley. And again, it became a confirmation that there's a journey we are taking together. Thank you, Mama, for being there. Thank you for being there. I remember coping. I'm not coping now. He's not answering And He's so quiet agate, what you know we are praying utule, and thank you so much for that and even as we were here bazalwane bonke basebening bush to all the saints from the leadership yonke i'm so touched about your the way your hospitality how you treat people you know, uh, it's, it's so it's it's angna magama wokusho i do not have words to express your hospitality and your warmth we felt so warm and for that we are truly grateful thank you so 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 much enkosi kakhulu kakhulu
When someone wants to throw you under the bus, as I was saying, we, we, when we came here, we had, we, had a, we had agreed, but now I feel like I want to. And I'm just saying, <laughs> but now I feel like I want to. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mam Toteli. Apostle Toteli. Mam Toteli. Mam Toteli. Babu also Ben. Babu also Ben. Brothers, these are brothers, these are brothers and sisters. The fivefold ministry that is in the house. All the saints. This is the last day of the conference. It shouldn't be. It, it, is, it should rather be the beginning. Because all that has been done over this weekend should find implementation as we leave this place. I am really honored and humbled that I could stand at this at, at this podium again. There's something very interesting I said to my wife. Now I think you know what they say. They said at at not number shilo that is I also had this feeling that you must complete. And I was like, who said I did not complete my message? When, when people uh, feel like you did not complete, maybe Ankadang. <laughs> Thank you very much for trusting me with this opportunity. Robert Osubeni, thank you very much. Yesterday you left it all at the pulpit. And your, you left your voice too. <laughs> I thank God for your passion. It is not uninformed passion. You know, there's something that's called zeal without knowledge. That's not about you. The captivation, passion you have about things of the Lord. It doesn't take long to know if, if a person loves the Lord or not. It was not just about preaching. It was pouring out your soul about how you feel about the word of God. Now, when I have to be the one that reps it all, it's a hard act to follow. You said it all. Like I already indicated, I believe that this should be the beginning of the conference as we go. And 
as we were getting back to the place where we were sleeping. And I, I was thinking aloud. I said, you know, sometimes when God sends someone to speak to us about things we otherwise know, and with this great emphasis, sometimes it can be dangerous. Sometimes it, we could be approaching a moment of judgment, I will explain. You know, when you read the call of Isaiah, <coughs> his first assignment was to make sure that people don't understand. That was his first assignment. He said, make sure they don't understand. That was God instructing Isaiah. Now, if you are a preacher, and God sends you to a people that he judges, he said, speak and make sure they don't understand. Lest they understand and repent. Then I forgive them. Now God had come to a point where he does not want to forgive these people. He said, go on preaching, but make it a point they don't understand. And that's exactly what Isaiah did. He started preaching, he said, Hear but not understand. It was painting because Isaiah wanted, as a prophet of God, we were never called to preach so people don't understand. <laughs> We want people to understand what we are saying. And he asked God a question, how long should I do this for? He says, till, till these cities are judged. Now, yes, yes, it is, remember Ezekiel? We have Ezekiel. God sends Ezekiel and then he says, I'm sending you to hard-hearted people. They will not listen to you. But go and say it anyway. Where I'm getting to about this, we cannot easily gloss over what was taught yesterday and day before yesterday. There are altar calls that we need to attend. There are decisions that need to be made before we move forward. At a point of repentance, which was one of the things that we've spoken about, at the point of repentance, it becomes possible to change direction. We can't change our directions until we repent. Without repentance, you continue in the direction you were in. But the word of God is preached so that there can be an interruption to sin. And I believe that 
That was the reason why this conference was called. An interruption. Now it an interruption only comes at the point of repentance. I believe that we need to attend some altar calls. There's something he also said. You must, you must, I don't know, uh, Prophet Osman, I don't know if you listen, you, you heard yourself. I don't know if you heard yourself. You know, the functions of the Holy Spirit, one of the things he said was, how do you know if somebody has been baptized in the Holy Spirit? How do you know if a person has the Holy Spirit inside was him or her? And you said something like this. You will always be like something you come out of. When you get baptized in water, you will be wet. Now, when you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit, the critical sign is not even to speak in tongues. Because you've been baptized by the Holy Spirit, you should be holy. Now, when you begin to measure in minus, in minus, in minus, yeah, no, so when you take, you know, you go to university, you, you, you've got your major subjects, you've got your minor subjects. Now, when you keep your majors, major. And your minors, minor. Minus is minus. But when we begin to measure in minors, something gets lost. You unlocked something. If you have the Holy Spirit, the first sign should be holiness. The rest may follow. You know, the church of God has lived without this. It's not even preached in many churches. God is holy. By definition, this word holy means different, basically. Different. God is different. He's holy. And we are called to be holy too. And now when we have been baptized by the Holy Spirit, when we have Holy Spirit in us, shouldn't we be holy? I think there's one altar call that we need to attend. You don't have to stand. We know when we are not living holy life. You came to this place for interruption. That's the point where you, you can be able to take a different direction. Unless you accept an interruption in what you're doing. You come the way you were. You go away the way you were. This has been a waste for you. 
But this could have been a window period. God never calls people together for fun. We might have fun. But there's a reason why we came to this place. There are people who today should be able to say, there's something in me that was interrupted. That's why I can begin anew. I don't want to belabor that point. Repentance is key for interruption to sin. Now as we are sitting down and as I'm standing here we all individually know what God wants to interrupt in our lives. You know we can choose today to be aligned to his will to lose that battle to the Lord. Lose the battle. Vuma ukoyiswa. Yeah. Maybe we'll end in the word of prayer as we, yeah, as we end, we will end in the way of, in the word of prayer. Sauvala ke ngom tanda zoma seswa. I want us to quickly look at maybe a continuation. Just a little bit of continuation to what we dealt with yesterday. The hand of God is not too short that it can say. He's able. But the buffer can be the sins in our life. Genesis 22. Genesis 22. It's a story that we all know. It's about Abraham and God building a nation of Israel using Abraham. You will remember that God called Abraham from his kinsmen, out of his kinsmen, out of his own country. And he said, you go to the place that I'm going to show you. That was the beginning of a relationship between God and Abraham. That's a tricky situation. I don't think it would work nowadays. Just imagine you're telling your wife that, let's go. And she says, where to? He said, I don't know. And us? God knows. If at that time, this song was already I mean, there. <laughs> I'm just thinking, Guti, how many wives would Take that. You're saying we're living this place? You don't even know where we're getting to? I must take your word. But that was the beginning of the relationship between Abraham and God. And then he, pro he promised Abraham some few things. He promised to give him a name. 
said your name is going to be great. He promised him many children. And he promised him that many nations would be blessed through him. I used to wonder why God promised him a name. You know, many times we spend our lives trying to make name for ourselves. Sometimes we miss the mark trying to make a name. Now, God says, just wait wait, just leave that to me. You see, when God gives you a name, when God makes you a name, that becomes the name. In other words, said, focus on what I want you to do. Leave everything else to me. I will bless those that bless you. And I will curse those that curse you. Now, in other words, God was saying, I want to take everything away that may be a distraction in your life. Focus on this one. Get out. Well, as if Getting out was that hard. Actually, it was. It's always difficult to get out. It's easy to come out. It was easy for the, the, the Hebrew children to come out of Egypt. But difficult was Egypt to get out of them. You're able to get out and where you're coming from still lives in you. Now he said, concentrate on getting out. Maybe even getting the place you're coming from out of your system. Concentrate on that. I will do the rest for you. For many years, Abraham and Sarah, his wife, no, he spoke to his wife. You know, there's something I've always suspected. Do you, I, I've realized that when God speaks to you as a husband, as a man, it's not likely that he's going to go to your wife and say the same thing. He takes it that your wife is your responsibility. When he speaks to you, You've got to take it to your wife. It's unlike, it's unlike, it's unlike it, 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 your wife will say. No, I'm also waiting for the Lord to say that to me. Because God regards my wife as my responsibility. Because I am the head of my wife. Eh? Is that right? Are you the head of your wife? If you're married? No, some other, others are saying, no, according to the Bible. And what, what about according to you? What about according to you? <laughs> <laughs> others are saying, I can't have a head like this. We're all equal here. Yes, we are all equal in essence but different in roles. For many years, they did not have children. But he was promised many children. He also told his wife that God has promised me many children. You might want to remember this. 
You know, God cannot trust anybody he has not tested. You'll never be trusted until you are tested. You'll always be tested for trust. Let's cut. Let's cut the long story short. Finally, Abraham and Sarah have a son. But not before they had made their own plan. Yes. Sarah suggested at some stage. Seeing that you are growing old. God has promised you a son or God said you, you will be a great nation. But you are growing old. I'm also growing old. But here is our maid here in the house. Well, there's a whole lot of debate what that could have meant, you know. Sarah was number one supporter of the vision that God had given Abraham. When she thought this seems to be failing. She said, this vision seems to be failing. You're growing older. I'm growing old. Get in here. It's still about the vision. <laughs> <laughs> so there are different ways of reading this, but look, I am so, so convinced. The Bible does not say that specifically. But I believe that this Sarah girl was the number one supporter of this vision. She believed in this vision to the point that she would do something if she thinks this vision is not coming through. Not only that, you know there was time there was time when Abraham said to Sarah we, we, we're coming to the land of the people the land of these people is, is filled with people that might kill me when they see you how beautiful you are they were in the process of getting out no when you get out you pass through many 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 places and then he, and then he said you must say I'm your brother she must have been quite beautiful. Eh? I won. where someone thinks that he would even be killed because of the beauty of the wife. Sarah must have been beautiful. And she played along. I remember when we were going through Genesis in church. There was a question that was raised. But, but what kind of man, what kind of a man could put his wife in such predicament? And then well, there was a counter question. Why did Sarah agree to play along? Why did Sarah agree to play along? Look, Sarah was the number one supporter of this ministry. She was the number one supporter of this vision. There's something she understood very clearly. She knew Look, they got into that city. And indeed, I mean, the men reported to the king, said, hey, well, there's a beautiful, there's a beautiful woman there. And indeed, she was taken. 
by the king of the city. Why did she agree to that? Sarah was the number one supporter of the vision. Sarah understood that even if she could remain in that city, the vision was with Abraham. It still could continue. Sarah was the number one helper. Talk about the Holy Spirit. She understood that God could bring forth the vision using Abraham and any woman. Even if she remained in that city. She understood that. She supported the vision. She could not allow Abraham to be killed. Because he was the carrier of the vision of God. Well, I'm leaving it to you to think about it a little bit. Let's get to the end of this. Then Abraham and Sarah have a child and that child is Isaac. But not before they've had Ishmael. Now in Genesis 22, Genesis 22 God comes to Abraham and then he says to Abraham, Abraham you take that son of yours the only son and you make a sacrifice with him for me and Abraham For many years he wanted a son. And now that he has a son. And now that he's hopeful for a great nation that God has promised him. And God says kill him for me. When you read this story. You will realize a few things. Number one. That God, when He gives you something, He gives you something so you can have it. But He wants to stop this thing from having you. Now, He has given a son to Abraham. Promise. And then he says, give him to me. Trust me with your son. You're not trusting God with something. You can't trust God with something you're not giving to God. Now, the following morning, the Bible says, I, uh, Abraham takes Isaac and he gets on a journey of three days. They were getting to Mount Moriah. For three days. God gave Abraham a cooling period. Along the road, Abraham could have said, I'm no longer doing this. It's a cooling period. But God deliberately gave Abraham a location that would take him three days. Because that in itself was prophetic. Along the road, Isaac says, where is an animal of sacrifice? And Abraham says, God will provide himself. 
They get to Mount Moriah. Abraham binds Isaac. It's traumatic to think about this, right? It's quite traumatic to think about this. He binds Isaac and he puts him on fire, on the wood. And then he takes out the knife. He lifts up his hand to kill Isaac. I've said, I've related this story so that I can say what I'm about to say. As Abraham lifts up the knife, and as God stops him, you realize that you are not fully ready to have something until you are ready to lose it to God if necessary. A test of readiness to have is the willingness to lose it should it be necessary. Can you afford to lose it? I believe this is exactly where God wants us. A whole lot of us, we want to have things that end up having us. At this point in time, Abraham is saying, I'm willing to release it to God if need be. I am willing to kill my son if needs be. I know this has created us many problems. But Abraham was a friend of God. He knew exactly that my friend has my back. He promised to make me a great nation. If he calls me to kill my son, he has a way of raising up a nation for himself. I can trust God with circumstances that seem impossible in my life. Now when you look at this story close enough, what it is that God was was, was testing. God says, now I know that you fear the Lord. It was not a test of now that I know that you love me. It's not, it's not about that. Abraham was very clear about God loving him. He, Abraham had a lot of stuff. Abraham had the favor of God. He had children. He knows that God loves him. God has given him what he always was longing for. He gave him a son that could be his heir. So this was not a test of love. Fear of the Lord was the test about. And how much do you fear the Lord? Would you stop doing it simply because the Lord said no? How can I do it because the Lord said no? I believe that's one of the things that have left the church. The fear of the Lord. We have taken God for granted in many things. When I lose the fear of the Lord, I hurt myself. How can I do it when God said I shouldn't do it? The fear of the Lord was tested to its maximum. 
You know, your tests are directly proportionate to the provision that God has given you. Those who have little, they have tests that are equal to where they are. The more you have, the tests are equal to where you are. What can be bigger than being tested but you killing your son? It is the fear of the Lord that was at stake at this point. Joseph says, when Potiphar's wife said, sleep with me, so how can I do this? How can I sin against the Lord? That's the fear of the Lord. When the fear of the Lord lives a person, we begin to do whatever we want. And we begin to take God for granted. We stop repenting. And we we stop renewing our strength because we will not repent. If there are two things that the church needs the most today, the holiness and the fear of the Lord. There's a whole lot God would do with a holy, with a church that is holy and that the church that fears Him. It gets back to what has been preached throughout this weekend. It's difficult to bow to the will of God if we are not surrendered to God. You see, God is not trying to... Before I get there, before I get there. On Mount Moriah, God stops... Abraham from killing his son. But you will know that on a mountain close by, there's another mountain. You see, God had told Abraham to sacrifice his son. But he stopped it. He provided something that would redeem Isaac. But later on, on another mountain close by, God would sacrifice his own son. But there would be, there would be no animal to redeem his own son. He stopped the knife from falling on Isaac. But he never stopped it from falling on his own side. When you get to Isaiah, Isaiah says God was pleased to crush his own side. That's a statement. That says, what kind of a parent is that? What, what kind of a parent is pleased with crushing, with bruising his own son? What kind of a parent is that? I used to have a, a little bit of a problem with that. Prophet, I used to have a problem with that. What kind of a parent is, 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 is pleased with bruising his child? That sounds like, that sounds like child abuse. Right? Let's take it a little bit further. God was pleased to bruise him. Now, in brackets, at this. Instead of bruising us. Because now, I want, I want you to understand that in killing me, nobody could be redeemed by my death. You see, when Jesus died on the cross, reconciliation between man and God became possible. That was the correct 
Sacrifice. That was the pleasing one. Because his death would bring along the reconciliation, the restoration of relationship between God and his creation. That's why it pleased him. My death could not have pleased God. My death could have been a wasted life. And your death could have been a wasted life. He was pleased bruising his own. Because that was the perfect sacrifice to bring restoration. And he bruised him. We needed his stripes to be healed. We needed his blood to be saved. Nobody had that. He was pleased to bruise him. When we understand what it is that was done for us, it should not be too difficult to understand why we need to surrender. When somebody takes a bullet for you, that person owns your life. You owe your life to the person that took the bullet for you. You know, I normally say, if there was a bullet that was meant for me, and somebody saw this thing coming, and shielded me with his own body, and he died where I should have died, literally, he saved my life. Literally, he owns that life. He owns the life he saved. That's exactly what Jesus did. He took a bullet, so that we don't have to get there. I think when somebody has done that has done that for you, the most appropriate thing you should you, you want to know. So why, why, why did he do it? Thank you very much. What do you want me to do? Now that I was dead if you did not come. You bought my life with your death. What do you want? me to do. You bought my life for your agenda. You know this, 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 there's a song, I, I think I was, I was 12 or 13 years. Every time it sang, I felt this this is this is very wrong. This is this this is very wrong. There's a verse that says Gonje Aunas card. You don't have time. Yes. Sake Ujesu Obetelwe. Oh, yeah. He said, No. Uvumele Ongom Shaba. You've allowed the worldly things. God Ujesu Obetelwe. Yet a Jesus that was crucified. Agananda Uyokshala. Has no place. In Yo, you, and this when I fail, has no place in a heart he died for. I felt this was very much un, unfair. I would feel this is very, very wrong. It is still very wrong today. When he died for me. When he died that he might have me. Let's put it this way. You see on Mount Moriah. The life of Isaac was redeemed through an animal. But at Golgotha. What God was doing. Was buying my life. Let's put it this way. When God gave a life, he didn't give it so he can have my money. He gave a life so he can have a life. Now, he gave Jesus so he can have me. Not 
He gave Jesus so he can, my th he can have my things. It's an unequal exchange. If you think God, you can only give your money. If you think you can only God, give God your things. It's an unequal exchange. He gave a life so he can get a life. He wants me. You know, that's why I always think God doesn't uh, maybe, that's how I put it. Might, God does not really is not really interested in my problems. And in your mind you say then he doesn't care. No, he doesn't really, really, he's not really interested that much in my problems. Because the possibility is, my things are like this. They reflect who I am inside. You are like this. No, 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 no. No, into zako zinje ngoba na we unje. Your things are like this because you are like this. Into zako zfu zewe na. Your things that have taken after you. You understand that? Into zako zinje ngoba na we unje. Have taken after you. The moment u shinja na zuzi ashi. Now the moment the guys say you change, they will also change. That is why when you bring your problems. To church, and sometime. you ask God to, to, to relieve you of your problems. Sometimes that's not the correct thing to do. Because you are a factory that produces these things. If it takes these problems today, you manufacture them tomorrow. So God taking your problems is not a solution. The solution is God having you. Yes. Yes. That's the solution. If he gets you, your things change. Because your thinking will change. You know, you never meet the man of Calvary and remain the same. It does not happen. He gave a life in order to have life. And once he gets my life, he's got my everything. That's why surrendering that's the best thing you can ever, ever do for your life. Now, when he, say, when he says, come to me, the best thing you can ever do for yourself is to do exactly that. To continue using Jesus as some kind of a medical clinic. To, 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 to continue using Jesus as some kind of a free psychologist. It won't take you far. You've got to come to a point when you say, Have me. Have me. Detour. Have me. Detour. I am told there was a revival at some state, yeah. at a certain state. Yeah. And now they say that there's a certain guy that came on a horse. He wanted, he wanted to check what was happening in that tent. Now he came and then he came and sat down. As an Indian. Why, why, why Indian? And then during the time of offering, he felt he wants to give something. Now he did not have money. Now he, he took he took his cape, the cape that he was wearing. Took it to the pulpit. Said Indian give cape. 
And then he went and sat down. Now he felt, as we were sitting down, he felt that was not enough. He went aside. Took his horse. Brought his horse along. Said, Indian, give horse. Went and sat down. And then he felt that was not enough. Finally, when he had nothing to give, nothing to give, he went forward. Now, but he said, "What? Indian? Indian? Give Indian? Niggas to Indian? That was that was that was the point." That was the point. Actually, it was coming to that moment. The Indian had to give Indian. Because the horse was not enough. Because the cape was not enough. Money is not enough. Your things are not enough. Look, he God is the owner of of all the cattle on the thousand hills. You can't give that to God. When you try to give God something, he says silver and gold are mine. What do you think you are doing? When you are trying to, sometimes we try to bribe God. You know. He says, no, 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 silver and gold are mine. So you want to slaughter a cow for me? If I was hungry at all, I wouldn't even have told you. It is not about our things, it's about us. He gave a life in order to get a life. And that's my life. That's your life. There was a point in my life when God gave me a chance to surrender. It was not even in church. I surrendered on the street. And because I was not in church, but I didn't even say, uh, Jesus, I accept you in my, li- in my life. I know that's the language you use, right? And there's a problem with that. I accept you in my life. No. I, said, I, 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 I surrender my life to you. What are you going to do with it? And I said, would you give me a fresh start in life? Let me tell you that's exactly what Jesus did. A beginning starts with interruption. And that interruption comes through repentance. We have heard what has been said all this weekend. And I believe there are people here who have come to a point where they need and they know they need interruption. That's a moment of interruption. I don't care what kind of interruption you need at this moment. But if this is your moment of interruption, when you come to a point where you say, it can't go on like this. I came this way, I cannot leave the same. It would have been a waste of time. You probably might have been invited by a friend. God had an appointment with you for the interruption in your life. We will have failed you if we don't give you this opportunity of taking this moment seriously. I need an interruption in my life. Things can't go on as they do. They can't. They can't. They can't. They can't. Let me tell you, the will of God is the best will for your life. In your own will, 
If you think you still want to do your will. We lento You are what you are because of your will. So why do you think you will change ngentando yakho? You can't you find out how change at your will. You need an interruption. There are those who need to begin afresh. Let's start afresh. Let's start afresh. Let's upgrade this relationship. I need an interruption. Are you there? You know, if you are there and you you say i need an interruption i don't even want to know what it is and ifuno kwazi bufuna uphazanya isekweni all what i need to know is that this word has not been in vain for all of this weekend because you are there the reason God gave us these words is because he knew you would be here and he wants to set you free once and for all so that you can taste what it is like the freedom you find in things you leave behind we are at the point of interruption. If you are there and you want a, you've come to a moment where you know you need interruption. Stand up where you are. Just stand up where you are. Stand up where you are. A moment of interruption. Something is going to be interrupted in your life today. So stand where you are. Stand where you are. There's an interruption. There are things that cannot go on in your life. Now, Sugala, when you're living this place, you brought them with you, but you're not living there. It's a moment of interruption. It's divine. It's a window of enablement. It's a moment of interruption. Now God wants you to know that with your life surrender to him your things can never be the same. He is God. He's, he has your back and he wants to be your friend. We we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray. Prophet, I want you to come forward. I want you to come forward. Remember these two things. An interruption comes through repentance. Whatever might have been going on in your life, it could have been because of what you were doing. Everybody is followed by things. But what triggered, what triggered the torment in your life? And a moment of interruption comes through repentance. And to realize that you are in the presence of a God that wants to set you free. And we are going to pray a moment of interruption. Prophet, there you are. Who was singing the song? For a million that comes, there's a room. I know you're born again. You might not be born again, but this is your moment. For a million that comes, there's room for one. There's a room at the cross for me. For a million that comes, there's room for one. For one, there's a room. Have the cross for you. A certain guy who wrote, There is no pain that the cross can account for, cannot account for. There's no pain that the cross cannot account for. For a million that come, there's a room for one. There's a room, there is room at the cross for you. Let's do the ray for a million that comes. For a million 
could call There's a room for one There's a room Pray as the Spirit leads, prophet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise for your word. We thank you, O oh God, for the revelation of your truth. You said the truth shall set us free. Yes. There is freedom in this house. Yes, yes. There is a new beginning. Yes, yes, there is. There is a the new dawn. Hallelujah. There is a new Hallelujah. dawn. Hallelujah. Yes. There is a new season. My God. My God. There is a new chapter. My God. My God. There is a new my beginning. My God. My God. My God. Lives will never again be the Hallelujah. same. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. There is a birthing. Of a new man. Oh my of a new woman. My God. In Christ. Hallelujah. There is the person. My God. Of a new church. Yes, yes, yes. For your glory, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father Lord God, we pray Hallelujah. today. Hallelujah. For Hallelujah. lives, oh God Almighty. Oh my God. Oh my God. To receive your word. Oh my God. Lord. Have your way. Oh my God. Have your way, God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. To those of you who are standing, walk away knowing there has been an interruption. God knows us individually. He knows the number of your hair on your head. That's too much knowledge for me. As you walk away from this, God has been drawn. The attention of God has been drawn to your situation. And an, inter an interruption has been effected. Trust God and his word. And we believe that you'll come back the next conference. And give testimonies. Of what interruptions God has made in your life. Whether it is tormented by the spirits. Whatever kind of torment that is in your life. Whether it, you are not born again. For the mere fact that you are up there. God has seen your heart and an interruption has been effected. It is possible that you have been postponing this thing forever, forever, forever. You were saying tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. And today it happened. And God has seen the cry of your heart. And is raising you exactly from where you are. An interruption has been effected in your life. Things will never be the same we prophesied. Things will never be the same we prophesied. Things will never be the same we prophesied. Things, Things will never be the same. We Praise the Lord. Let's give God a big round of applause. Let's give a big round of applause. Hallelujah. 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 Remember, it was a life for a life. To you, everything I give to you, with all and nothing, with all and nothing, with all and nothing, with all 
Come on, say, I surrender. I surrender all to you. Everything. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May we give the Lord a big hand. What a time, what a moment, what a day. What a day. We thank God for every word and everything that has happened in this place. It would not have been possible if God had not allowed it. It would not have been possible for us to receive the things that we have received if it were not for our father and mother listening to God and allowing us to be so blessed by the prophets and the apostles and can we give the Lord a big hand of applause as they go and thank God for them. Let's give the Lord a big hand of applause and thank God for them and we pray that God continues to increase their ministry. Hallelujah. 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 We thank God for